work on this uh, undergarment. Uh, now with our panels in place, what we're going to do is we're going to select the seams. All right. Now it's seams. Follow with me. Seams are going to create a seam between this line and this line because we want these to come together. All right. So first, what you can do is you hold down your control on your keyboard and then click close to the line and make sure it goes red. All right. And then do the same over on this. Get close to the line and uh, click on the screen until it goes red. Now with both of them red, what we're going to do is we're going to select create seam. Now if you just had something popped up and said that the seam tolerance is too high, what you do is you go down here to seam tolerance and just set it to a 1. And if it still says it's too high, set it to 1.5. Just keep setting this until the seam tolerance is not uh, not giving you issues. All right, And then click create seam. Now click off the screen so those are no longer red and then move it around. We need to create a seam over here, so hold down control, select the line, and then with control still held down, select the other line. Make sure they're both red where you want the seam to be developed, and select create seam. That'll create another seam. Now we're going to go underneath the uh, armor, and we're going to select the two bottom lines. Click off in the screen to make sure that goes off red again. Now you're going to hold down control, get close to the line selected. It went red. I'm good. And select the other one. Make sure both where you want the seam to go in between, both of those lines are red uh, using control and clicking on them and then click create seam. Now you see how this is an X? We don't want that. We want it to be parallel. If this ever happens and you want it to be parallel, all you have to do is go over here and select reverse seam with that seam selected and they'll go back the way you want them. Now once you have your seams created, you can go ahead and click off of that. Now we're ready to go ahead and start turning this into a cloth. So click on Garment Maker in your Modify pane, left click on it, and then drop down your modifier list and select Cloth. Now in Object Properties, we need to select Object Properties. This window will pop up. We need to add the UMP body as a collision object to this so this cloth has something to collide onto. So we're going to click Add Objects. Ah, but there's nothing there. All right, if this happens, hit Cancel, um, and then hit Cancel again. Right-click anywhere in your perspective pane and select Unfreeze All. We needed to unfreeze the UMP body. Now go ahead, go back to Object Properties, select Object Properties, and then you want to click uh, Add Objects, select the Slim Push-Up UMP body, then select Add. That's what we're going to collide onto. And with the slim selected in this window, we want to go down here and where it says Collision Object, we want to click on that there. And this will make this a collidable object. Now, what we want to do is set the offset. That's how far away the clothing is allowed to get to the body. Um, you know, it's like, you know, you can't get any closer than this. Uh, we're going to set this tolerance I found for the UMP body. A good setting is 0.5. All right, you can try to go a little lower, 0.4, 0.3, but you might have errors. So just stick with 0.5 for now. And you can always resize it by scaling the object down if you're if you think it's too far away from the body. All right, now we're done here. This is a collision object. We checked that. We set the offset to 0.5. Now we're going to select the line, and we're going to turn this line into a cloth. All right. The line is these two panes that we just positioned. I'm going to turn it into a cloth and then presets, a safe preset to use, usually never fails, is the spandex. Alright, so select spandex. Some of the other ones you may want to try uh, playing around to get the cloth to form the way you want it to uh, may give you issues. So I highly recommend just sticking with spandex and working with that. Alright, as soon as this is set to spandex, you can go down here and you can click OK. Now the object properties are set up. Well, we don't want this seam to show when, when the cloth. We want these lines to go all the way together. The seam is there, but we're going to hide it. All right. So we're going to select Use Sewing Springs over here in Simulation Perimeters, and you're going to uncheck Use Sewing Springs. Now we're going to simulate it. So we're going to go to Simulate Local and click this box and watch what happens. Wow, we just created an undergarment. Now, as soon as this down here looks pretty steady, you know, it's just kind of doing that, and you, you're happy with the appearance of it, just unclick Simulate Local, 
and kind of move around it and make sure nothing collided, you know, and just kind of scan around, you know, scan around your body there. Everything looks pretty good. Let's see what it looks like uh, with texture, uh, the base texture. So up here in the upper left hand corner, select hidden line and select realistic. All right, now we can scan around it, you know, using the cube. It looks pretty good. You know, this is decent for a uh, for an undergarment. It's pretty close to the body, fairly close, where we won't have collision problems. So we're just going to leave it alone. Right? If you wanted to, you could always scale it down by going into its vertices. But now we can't work with it like this. We actually need to turn it into a mesh. So with it already simulated, we have to right click and turn it into mesh. But if this didn't simulate right and you want to work with it again, you know, and maybe change uh, the cloth, how it forms, you would click on reset state and it would reset this to its original state. Um, we're not going to do that. Uh, we're just going to right click on it. We're going to go to convert to and we're going to turn it into an editable mesh. Now it's actually, you know, just it's a regular mesh. We could work with it, do stuff with it. Uh, one thing that you will notice is, uh, like if I tried to move this, see how this is way over here? Um, that's because this is where the lines were added together before we turned it into a claw. So we're going to move this back over on top so it's center. And in order to do that, uh, with this uh, undergarment selected, you're going to go up here into the um, hierarchy. All right, you got create, you got modify, you have hierarchy. Now we want to affect the pivot only. So you're going to select this. Then you're going to go down here into the X plane. You're going to select all of that and you're just type in a zero and press enter. All right, now we're done here. Click affect pivot only again to deselect it and then go back into create or modify rather, select modify. Now this is actually pretty much done. We could smooth it, export it and all that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and texture it, you know, and remember to texture we need to fix the uh, pleat that we're drawing upon, so we have to fix the UV map. So first thing we're going to do is from the modifier list, we're going to drop this down, we're going to unwrap the UVW. So find your unwrap UVW, right here, unwrap UVW, select that. All right, now what we want to do is unwrap the uh, UVW, so we're going to go open up the UV editor. So click in Edit UVs, Open UV Editor, and it looks pretty good. I mean, it's not like we have to really move anything because uh, they're both on the checkered board, but it's always a good idea to go ahead and just click Pack Normalize, and that'll go ahead and re uh, you know move them to a better position on the UV map. And once that's done, uh, again, you only want to click that once. Uh, go ahead and select X uh, and close that out. Now I can go ahead and right click the object, convert it to an editable mesh. Uh, once it's converted to an editable mesh, uh, we're ready to go ahead and you know uh, export it uh, and whatnot to and then we're going to go ahead and paint it just like we did with the top half of the armor. So first we want to hide everything because we're going to export as a NIF and we also want to skin it. So right click on your screen and select unhide all. Uh, now we're going to go up here to the editable mesh. We're going to drop down the modifier list, select the smooth modifier, uh, set it to 2. See, now it's all smooth again. Then we're going to use the modifier list, drop it down, and find skin wrap. And select skin wrap, face deformation, and weight all points, click add, select the UMP body. As soon as that's done, go ahead and convert it to a skin. Now we're done, we can select the skin wrap, right click on it, delete it, select the skin, and add a BS dismember mo uh, modifier from the drop down list. Make sure you select everything, uh, go to body part, and set it to Skyrim Torso 1, or in many of your cases, set it to Skyrim uh, main body. As soon as that's done, we don't want to deselect anything, so we're going to select Create to get off of it. Before we export, I almost forgot, because we added a cloth modifier to this when we created the cloth, we need to select the body, go to Modify, select Cloth by right-clicking on it, and delete that cloth. Otherwise, you're going to have issues. So always delete the cloth off of the body once you're done creating the cloth. Now we can export. So go ahead and 
uh, select the 3DS symbol, select export. Uh, we're still in backup in our exports, so if you're not, go to UMP Custom Armors from the drop down, double click backup, and we're going to call this Bikini Bottom. Alrighty, once that's named, go ahead and click Save. Make sure your settings are identical to mine. If they're not, make them. And remove weld vertices. We don't want to weld anything. And we're going to go ahead and uh, export it. So it's done exporting. Once we're done exporting, we're ready to start painting on uh, this part of the armor. So we're going to uh, select this, then we're going to right click on our sling screen and select Hide Unselect. That's going to hide everything else. Now we're still in the perspective window. We're going to go up. We're going to select Tools from the drop down list, select Viewport Canvas, uh, click on Paint. It's going to say, well, the object needs a material. We're going to click Assign Standard Material. What kind of material? A diffuse color. Select Diffuse. Uh, how, you know, how in depth do you want it to be? We're going to do, I'm going to do 2048 by 2048. And uh, the top of the bikini was the one color. Uh, so I'm going to make this kind of similar. You can always go back and retexture stuff if it doesn't really match that well. I think mine uh, even darker red than the top, so about right there. I'm going to select OK. Now save the new texture to. Uh, we're going to select uh, the three dots. Now, this one was the bikini top. I want the bikini bottom, so I'm going to type in bikini bottom underscore D for a diffuse map. Save as type. Uh, drop down the menu from that, set it to a DDS, because that's what Skyrim uses, and click Save. Now, what type of DDS configuration? Uh, we're not working with alphas for this tutorial, so we're going to be setting it to red 8, green 8, blue 8, and select OK. Now that's done, we're going to go ahead and select Create Texture, so select OK. Now the texture is created. Uh, I'm just going to do some simple stuff here. Uh, I'm going to always paint on a new layer, you know, never paint on the original layer. I'm going to set my radius down to 20 to make my little circle smaller. And I'm going to select my spacing to 0.25. And then I'm going to take my mask. Now, usually you can just, we don't want to use the mask, we're going to click there. You can always just select the use button. Again, this is all up to you. You're the creator, so you're going to modify it. I'm just going to add some wrinkles into mine. Uh, it'll be up to you to set up yours. Okay, I already have the color for the wrinkles, which is good. And I'm just going to create these. Remember, it's going to look like crap whenever you first paint them on. Then when you blur them is when they start to look good. So I draw some lines for some wrinkles. Maybe a line here like that. And then I select my blur tool and then I blur it up. And this is what takes forever because you have to go over it like 40 million times. <laughs> Alright, well I'm going to continue to texture. This uh, video has reached its cap so I'll see you in the next video and then we'll continue to work on this uh, armor and put it together. So I'll see you in the next video.